Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So today it's time for box 3 of 12 of my new inherited movie collection. And I have just been having an absolute blast going through all these boxes with you guys and figuring out what in the world I'm adding to my collection. So um, this is another one. This is a small box, just like box number 2. I have one more that's like the identical size, which would I probably will do next. Um, but but this will be another one that is uh, probably very horror centric because it was one of the first boxes that uh, she ended up bringing over, which was mostly horror. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing what I get to uh, keep here and what I get to donate. But um, yeah, before we get into that though, guys, I do want to run a little bit of a, a, a minute here for a programming note, I guess. So what I've decided is instead of letting this inherited um, uh, movie collection take over the channel for the next month plus, what I'm going to do is just post one new box every Tuesday until basically the end of January. That's how long it'll take, which is just nuts. But um, so far, I've just been doing one box a week, and I want to stick with that because that gives me a couple other days to do other things. Now, that said, on Sunday, I am doing still Neo Noir Vember, but this coming Sunday is the last one of that. So that's my review of uh, Following from Christopher Nolan. So definitely check back on Sunday if you are interested in my thoughts on that one. But uh, once Neo Noir Vember wraps up, then I will have this on Tuesdays and then obviously Thursdays and Sundays will be open to whatever I want whether it's a review video or I have just a bunch of stacks over there just waiting to share with you guys some of the different hauls that I've picked up recently especially with it being Black Friday oh I've been going nuts but that's that's what we do but anyway I just wanted to let you guys know what my plans are obviously these are all subject to change if I find that you guys are getting less interested in this as the series goes on maybe I'll start doing a couple boxes in one even though there'll be obviously longer videos but we'll see what happens as this series goes on. You guys have been so supportive down in the comments, so thank you for that. And, you know, like I always say, guys, if you are enjoying the series or this video, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out as I'm making my march toward that coveted 1,000 number. I'm getting so close, thanks to you guys. So thank you again for all that support. But with that said, guys, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right into box number three of my inherited movie collection. So box number three is another uh, Arizona iced tea box. Let me hold it up here so you guys can see it. So it's not huge, but uh, there are a bunch of movies popped in here still. Um, but this is one that the top is open. And so I, as I'm walking around my basement, I try to divert my eyes so I don't see them. Uh, but obviously, I, you know, I've come across a few of these here as I've uh, been walking around. But let's start right at the top here. First up is Grizzly Park. So this is already awesome. The tagline is, it's going to be a bear, which which is just fantastic. This ain't no gentle Ben. So, yep, this one is directed by Tom Skull, and I will absolutely be holding on to this one. This, who, what company? Illumination Filmworks is who released this, which I have never heard of before. You know what? I don't need to look this one up. I'm sure I don't have it. So Grizzly Park is going into the collection. One for one. That is always a good day. So let's see. Oh, Blair Witch Project, an absolute classic. I love this movie, but of course I do own this. This is pretty heavy. I want to see what's in here. Oh, see, I open these up and they're always like, I think they're going to be cool things, but it's just like the DVD booklets that they used to put in. So yes, Blair Witch Project will be uh, a donate slash sell pile. Oh my gosh. I love this movie, you guys. Blair Witch Project 2 or Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. This is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated horror films ever. I think this thing is just, it gets crapped on all the time. And I don't know why, because it is a genuinely good movie. It's a different movie than Blair Witch Project, but I just really enjoyed this one. So this one is out of its uh, spindle. I'm going to put that back in. And this is actually a DVD and CD. Oh my gosh, there's a soundtrack in this. Look at that. There's the whole CD side soundtrack. Okay, well, I might not be getting rid of this one. You know what? I'll probably replace this one with my current version of Blair Witch 2 because unfortunately this one is not on Blu-ray. It's only on DVD. So I might hold on to this one and just swap it out for the uh, DVD version only that I have. So uh, this one, either way, I'm not adding it to my collection. So this will go in the donate slash trade pile. Just maybe not that specific version of it, but really cool ad uh, with that CD there. Okay, here's another one I remember from uh, when I worked at Family Video. This is In a Dark Place with uh, Lily Sobieski. I'm probably butchering that. Um, but this is creepy and disturbing. She takes a new job as a nanny to two young orphans. 
and it's in a remote country estate. So yes, I will hold on to this one. I like her. Um, she's in some other things that I can't, The Glass House, I believe she's in, which I uh, found recently at Disc Replay. So yeah, I'm going to hold on to this one. This one looks right up my alley. Another low budget horror film that I don't have. Okay. This looks pretty amazing. This is The Pool. You got some fur on the top here. So this is in widescreen. So that's good. I'm sure this one is, but I didn't even look. Yeah, it is 1.78 to 1. So this one is in widescreen as, as well. Uh, this is from 2002. Hold your breath. School's out. Exams are over and it's time for real life to begin. Okay, so they go to Prague. High school students. And they start disappearing. Okay, yep. I will be definitely holding on to this one. It looks like a slasher film. A, ma a mysterious mass killer continues his rampage through the building. It quickly becomes clear that he may be one of their own. Yes, yes, yes. I love this. This is awesome. So I'm definitely holding on to The Pool from 2002. Really cool ad there. Oh, this is great. I love these. So I. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. But like, I have a lot of these Maneater series. And it would be cool. It, would it wouldn't be cool. It would be super lame, but it would be something I would enjoy to have a complete Maneater series collection. Like, I can't even say it without laughing. Um, and so, yeah, this is one from that series, but I don't know if I own this one or not. This is called, what is this? Shark Swarm. Okay, let me see if I own this one because I don't think I do, and I do not. So, yeah, I will absolutely be holding on to Shark Swarm, and it has the slip cover. Unfortunately, it does have the sticker on it here, so I don't know. Hopefully, I can get that off, but yeah, he looks like he bought this one new, too. Oh, God bless him. What a man. Shark Swarm going in the collection. All right, so we have Lake Placid 2. This is really cool. I have always wanted to see the Lake Placid movies, but I've never owned any of them. And so now I have Lake Placid 2. I will definitely be keeping this one. Another family video one here. Yeah, so have you guys seen Lake Placid? Are the, is this a good series? I want to say there's like four or five movies in this series, which is ridiculous. But um, yeah, definitely holding on to this. Hopefully he has the other ones in the series as well. But if not, I'm sure I can find Lake Placid for uh, pretty cheap at Disc Replay. Okay, we have. There's definitely a theme here, and it's like big dumb monster movies because this is Razor Tooth. This is from a produ <laughs> I love when they do that. From a producer of The Devil's Rejects. Okay, like that's not at all what this movie looks like, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'll hold on to this from 2006 from the Florida Everglades. Look at that CGI on the back there. Oh boy, awesome. Holding on to Razor Tooth, no doubt about that. Oh, this movie's so good. And honestly, I don't know if I have this one or not. This is Splinter. And this is another creature feature. But this one is unlike those, uh, like the man eater series. This one is actually genuinely good. And I don't own this. So I will absolutely be keeping this one. Another family video one here. This is from Magnet Releasing. Brutal, clever, and intense. A killer thriller. This is an awesome creature feature. And it's kind of unique. It's almost like a one location film because if I remember right, it's been a number of years since I've seen this, but I believe they like lock themselves into this gas station and then uh, the creature part of the movie starts happening, but it's awesome. Definitely check out Splinter if you haven't. I'm very happy to add that one to the collection. Surprised I didn't already own it, but that's awesome. Okay, so this one looks very interesting. Eternal, inspired by true events. I have no idea. Frederico Sanchez. It's in widescreen. Pray for the living, but it's like P-R-E-Y for the living. So this looks intriguing. When the beautiful wife of a Montreal vice cop disappears, he investi uh, the, his investigation leads him to an alluring temptress who admits only to having steamy sex with the missing women. Okay. Yep. I'll hold on to this. This, this looks interesting enough that I will keep it in the collection. So Eternal. And when is this one from? 2005. So lots of mid-2000s horror, which I'm all about it. Uh, and then we have Bear Witness. <laughs> okay. What she's got just might get both of them killed. I don't have any idea what this is. It's a full screen presentation though. So this one I will be getting rid of. Now, I, you know what? This has a Playboy centerfield, a centerfold in it. Angie Everhart, who apparently was also in Last Action Hero. Daniel Baldwin. Okay. I'm going to hold, I'm going to see if this one is uh, typically, or I'm sorry, if the original aspect ratio was in full screen. And if so, I will hold on to it. If not, I will 
get rid of it. Obviously, this is going to be one of those, like, I'm guessing early 2000. Yeah, 2002. Um, going to be one of those, like, sexy thrillers, I guess. But yeah, intrigued to see what this one is. I will let you know by the end of the video if this is one I'm holding on to or not. So I'm putting this in the maybe pile for now. Bear witness. And if you guys have heard any of the of any of these that I haven't, please let me know because I they're going to be sitting here for a while. So if there's some I get rid of that you're like, man, hold on to that. It's great. Let me know. Funny Games. And this is the remake of Funny Games um, with uh, uh, Naomi Watts and Tim Roth. And this movie is awesome. This is a uh, basically a shot for shot remake of the original uh, done by the same director, Michael. Uh, I always mess up his name. But I believe it's Henneke. Uh, and I actually have the original through Criterion Collection. But I don't know if I have the remake. No, I don't. So absolutely keep in this one. I really like this movie. I'm going to be that guy who says that I liked this one better than the original. It's probably just because I watched it first, though, to be honest with you. But um, this is just like a screwed up movie. It, it, let me make sure this is actually the, the disc in there because there's no cover art on it. It is. So yeah, this is a, uh, it's basically a uh, home invasion thriller and it is messed up. But it's more than that though because there's like breaking of the fourth wall it's just a weird movie you need to check out if you like home invasion thrillers but i really like this movie so funny games is going in the collection and then we have m night Shyamalan, one of my favorites at the happening i actually just bought this one recently so this is one that i can uh trade or sell so that'll get um in that pile and then we have Abominable. So I know I've owned this at one point in my life, but I don't know if I own it today or not. Well, obviously now I do, but I don't know if it's already in my collection. So let me just take a quick peek here. No, I don't. I do own a movie called Abominable, but it's from 2020. Obviously, uh, this is not that same movie. I think Abominable was uh, a recent Dollar Tree grab, actually. But yeah, this is obviously going to be about the Abominable Snowman. So yep, I'm holding on to it. Uh, scary Freaky in a Damn... I can't even read that. Hella violent? Yeah, hella, hell. oh, oh my gosh. I can't read. It just says a hell of a lot of fun, but it's spelled weird. Uh, yeah, so I will hold on to this one. This looks like a lot of fun. I, I know I had this at some point. I want to even say that I picked it up from um, Big Lots, like back when I first started realizing that they had movies at Big Lots because I didn't know they did for the longest time, but uh, I kind of randomly went there. And this, of course, was before I had a YouTube channel, so I wasn't sharing everything I got. But um, yeah, I was buying random things from there way back when. Uh, and I think that's where I found that one. But okay, so this is Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Really fun movie. Um, this is one with Billy Zane in this one, I believe. Yeah, Billy Zane is in this. Yeah, he's right there, actually. So I am 99% certain that I own this one through the uh, Scream Factory. So let me take a quick look and see if I do. And yes, I do own Demon Knight on Scream Factory. So this is another one for the trade pile. All right, what do we have next? Another big creature feature. This is Crockett. Oh my gosh, this is from Toby Hooper. Interesting, Crocodile. All right, well, I'm holding on to this one. This is a thriller from when... I don't see a year on here, so I'm not entirely sure, but uh, yeah, this is in widescreen, so I will be holding onto this, and it's from Toby Hooper, which is just amazing to me. Now, is it directed? It is. It's actually directed by Hooper. I don't know how I haven't seen this one before, but yeah, a really cool ad for the collection. Crocodile. Have you guys seen this? Let me know down below. Looks really cool. Oh, nice. Okay, so we have Starship Troopers 2. So I do own the original Starship Troopers on DVD. So now I have number two as well, which is really cool. Um, and just make sure, yep, this is in 1.78 to 1 uh, widescreen presentation. So yeah, holding on to this one. And it includes a, oh my gosh, this is awesome. It includes a bonus digital copy for your PC and PSP, the Sony PlayStation Portable. That is so cool. I wonder, I actually do have an old PSP. I wonder if I can actually make it work on there. But uh, yeah, Starship Troopers 2, Hero of the Federation. Another one for the keep pile. This is a good day. I only have like four that I'm getting rid of so far. Maybe five now. We'll see. Oh, I don't know. This looks interesting. He, uh, It's called Watchful Eye. And the tagline is, he's your most devoted fan, only you don't know it. So this looks like a stalker thriller, which could be interesting. From 2002, from Cajun Pictures. Never heard of Cajun Pictures before. 
Um, but let's see. Oh, it's in full screen again. Okay. So it's another one I'll put in the maybe pile. I'll check and see if that's its original aspect ratio, just because some of these scream to me that they're like originally made for TV movies, like maybe made for Cinemax or Showtime or something. So I'm going to check on Watchful Eye. That'll go in the maybe pile. And then the last one. So we're halfway done. We have Piranha, which is one of my favorite remakes ever. I, this is su super dirty, but I love this movie. This is, I had like... When I think of times I've had the most fun in the theater, this is one of those times. I watched it in 3D, and if you've seen it, you know it is just absurd and over the top, but it is phenomenal. It is so good. So I have this one, and I, I do own Piranha uh, 3 Double D, I guess is what they call it, uh, on Blu-ray. So yeah, this one will be another for the uh, trade pile. But yeah, Piranha is excellent. See it if you haven't, because it's just fun. It is a ton of fun. All right, let's see. We're going into the second half of this box here. Oh, man. This is a great underrated movie. This is Dr. Giggles. So I actually have this on DVD, but the way I have it is like I believe it was a... I don't know if it was a Canadian version or a European version. My buddy came over. Uh, he lives out of state. He came over to visit one day and he actually brought me a copy of this. And so this one is, I, I will probably hold on to this version of it because this is the US release it looks like. I need to check what my Dr. Giggles is. But yeah, great movie. Uh, it is an early 90s slasher, early to mid 90s slasher that is, yeah, 92, so early 90s, that is just super underrated. People don't talk about this movie enough. I need to do like something with this in the future because it is excellent. It is hilarious and just... I don't know. It's great. It's fun. You need to check it out. All right. And then Ancient Evil 2 Guardian of the Underworld. So this looks pretty terrible, but that's fine. Um, this is a standard version presented in a format preserving the aspect ratio. Okay, so it's the original aspect ratio. Uh, so I, you know... Well, here's what I've been doing with the sequels is I just put them in the donate pile or the sell pile. And then as I go through, if I find out that, yes, I do have the original, then I can just pull it out of those boxes because I won't get rid of anything until I'm all the way through. Um, so, yeah, I'll put this one in the sell pile for now unless I can find the original, then I will pull it out. But, yeah, Ancient Evil 2. Okay, we have a Gary Oldman movie here <laughs> in widescreen, at least. This is called The Backwoods. Fantastic movie. Don't miss this one, says slasherpool.com, which I've never heard of before. Uh, but that there is a poll quote from Fangoria saying that Oldman gives one of his most powerful performances. So this is interesting. I don't know anything about this. Directed by Coldo Serra. Never heard of this one before. Let me know. I'm going to put it in the donate pile, but let me know what you guys think. Should I pull it out? I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are. And then we have The Cradle, Lucas Haas, The Cradle, prepare to be rocked by a new type of evil. Directed by Tim J. Brown in widescreen. When Frank and Julie move to a small isolated town with their newborn son, they are soon terrorized by a vengeful spirit of a child that was buried alive years earlier. Okay, I'm going to hold on to it. Creepy kid movies are, always, are usually fun. This one doesn't even have the... Oh, you know what? It does. It's just... There we go. Yeah, so I'll hold on to the cradle. Sounds interesting enough for me. And then we have Casper Van Dien and Robert England in Python. Now, I am fairly certain I already own this one in some collection because I believe there are sequels to this. So uh, I think I have this one already. So that one will be going into the donate pile. Next up is The Wig. And look at that cover. That is just crazy. Dark gut-wrenching injects more than its fair share of shock moments and visceral horror. So yes, holding on to this. Oh, you know what? This is actually a Korean film. So very excited for The Wig. Yeah, definitely holding on to The Wig, a cool Korean horror movie. And then we have It Waits from producer Stephen J. Cannell. I don't know why this cover looks familiar to me. It hungers for human carnage and it will no and it will wait no longer. It almost reminds me of It Follows. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to this one. This looks interesting. It almost looks made for TV, but it's from Anchor Bay in the widescreen aspect ratio. So yeah, looks intriguing enough. I'm gonna hold on to it. Oh, the bur the burrowers. So this is a movie I have always wanted to see, and it's in widescreen. This is directed by J.T. Petty, who I know, but I can't remember why I know him right now. Um, so I don't believe. Whew, 
wow, this is dirty. I don't believe I own this one, so let me just check real quick for the burrowers. No, I do not. So I will definitely be holding on to the burrowers, assuming it's in here, and it is. So yeah, very happy to have the burrowers in the collection. One I've just been meaning to see. And then we have the Wolfman. This is the, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins. I do own this one on Blu-ray, so that will be a sell Pio one or donate Pio. And then we have Dean Cain in Maneater. This looks like a blast. Directed by Michael Emanuel. It is, okay, so this is weird. It's in four by three, but then it says 1.85 to one. So those, I don't know, maybe it has both of them on there. Let's see if the inside, no, that doesn't tell me anything. So yeah, I don't know, but I will be holding on to this. Dean Kane plays a former FBI profiler turned small town sheriff, uh, investigates the gruesome cannibalistic murders of several local teens. Interesting. Keeping man eater for sure. You know what? Here's kind of a weird one on the side here. That I didn't even notice. So this is in a really weird, like super thin case. This is delirium. The lucky ones die first. I've never heard of this one either. It is in widescreen. The screenshots look very interesting on the back. I'm going to put this in the maybe and take a look at it well, once I'm through here. And I'll let you guys know if I'm going to hold on to it at the end. But uh, one one of my the comments noted that some of these thin ones might actually be screeners that uh, like some rental stores used to get to decide if they wanted to uh, you know purchase it for rental. So I don't know if that's what this is or not, but it might be. So I'm going to hold on to Delirium in the maybe pile for now. Hatchet, uh, the Adam Green series. This is the first one in that series. And this is just a fun uh, fun movie. I really like this one, but I do own it on Blu-ray. So I will be uh, putting that one in the donate pile. Oh, and then we have its sequel, Hatchet 2, another one that I do own. I own the entire series, including Victor Crowley on Blu-ray, so I don't need those. And then we have Wide Awake. What you, see, well, what you can see might kill you. This looks like a medical thriller, which honestly I'm not the biggest fan of. But this is another Korean horror film. And so I'm a little bit more intrigued. I tend to enjoy, uh, you know, Korean horror, Japanese horror, things like that. Um, Asian horror, I guess I should say. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to it because it is Korean. So it is interesting to me. So I'll put that in the keep pile, which just keeps growing, which is awesome. Oh, <laughs> Here's a good one. Suicide Girls Must Die. So if you know what this is, you know what it is. If you don't, well, you can Google it. But uh, yes, I actually think I might own this one. I, I like distinctly remember finding this. I even want to say, I'm going to look. Let me check. Okay, so I don't see it down here. For some reason, I thought I owned it on Blu-ray, but I guess I don't. And it's not even in my collection app. So maybe I got rid of it a long time ago. I don't remember. But um, yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to hold on to it. I, I'm, we're just going to move on. So next up, we have Nightmare Man. And this is awesome because it is an after dark horror fest. So eight films to die for. And it has the slip cover with it, which is really cool. Assuming I can get the, all these stickers off, which I probably will be able to. Let me just make sure the movie's in here. And it is. So this is one that I don't think I own. Like it's the title is familiar, the cover's familiar, but I don't think it's in my collection. So I'm gonna hold on to Nightmare Man, assuming I don't own it, which you know what, let me just check right now, save me some time afterwards. And I do not own this one. So I will be holding on to Nightmare Man. I love getting these after dark horror fest titles. That is just so cool. Um, and then we have Spreading Ground. This is one I always used to see. I'm talking, I was talking about Abominable. I was talking about how I, uh, when I first started shopping at Big Lots for movies, this was another one I used to always see there. I remember this one from Family Video Days. It was, of course, in like the two for one section by the time I got there. But uh, Dennis Hopper, Spreading Ground. I believe this is, yeah, a serial killer movie. And you know, I don't think I have this one yet, but let me just double check really quick here. No, I don't. So I'll hold on to spreading ground because it's one I've always seen around. I just never watched. Ooh. Okay. This is a cool one. Jack Ketchum's offspring, which another one I think might be behind me on Blu-ray. And I don't, so that's really cool. I don't own this one at all. This is, um, like I said, Jack Ketchum's Offspring, based on the uh, novel by Jack Ketchum, who is just one of the most gruesome, disturbing writers you will likely ever read, but he's excellent. Like, he's such a great writer. He's just, uh, writes, it's splatterpunk is uh, where, where you would toss him in the genres, but uh, excellent. And so very happy to add Offspring. I believe this is actually the first, or the adaptation of the first in a trilogy. I believe The Lost is another one of these from Ketchum, which I think that one I do own behind me. Um, so I was just mixing them up. But yeah, Offspring, a really cool ad, another Ghost House Underground edition. 
Oh, okay. So we have one of these eight, uh, the Midnight Horror Collection, eight movie packs. I believe I already have this one though. So yeah, all of these. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize. Where is it? There it is. I am Omega is in this. I didn't realize I had that one, but I'm, I'm like 99% certain I already have this in my collection. So I will end up trading this one away. But yeah, I'm happy to know now that I have, uh, I am uh, Omega in my collection because I talked about that one during my 13 days of Halloween. Um, and what I remember this one for is Prom Night is like the worst DVD transfer I've ever seen. I couldn't even watch the movie. Like I watched it, but it was just, you couldn't see half of it. It was terrible. Uh, I've since seen it a second time on, maybe on Blu-ray I own it or something. I don't know, but it was much better. So anyway, that's, I'm just just rambling a lot. That one does go into the uh, the donate pile or sell pile. Oh, another one here, another slim case. So this is the fall before paradise. Dreams will become reality. So I don't know. I don't really love these with the small case. I'm going to put this in the uh, sell pile as well. Two more to go. Getting toward the end here. We have Cyrus mind of a, Oh, I already want it. Cyrus mind of a serial killer. And I'm already holding on to it because one of my favorite actresses ever, Danielle Harris is in this. Uh, you'll know Danielle Harris from Halloween four and five. She was the little girl at that point. But uh, I think I've talked about this before. I met her at a horror convention in the past and she has always just been so nice and just charming. And so I really love collecting her movies. So I'm definitely holding on to Cyrus mind of a serial killer happy to add another Danielle Harris movie to the collection. And then last but not least, we have another creature feature here with Coolio. <laughs> this is great. Coolio is in this, a Mark Lester film. This is Pterodactyl. Uh, yes, I've never heard of this one either. Either Evil is in the air. You know what? If this is widescreen, I'm keeping it. Yep, and it is. So take a look at the back. It's going to be another one of those bad CGI movies, but yes, uh, absolutely holding on to that one. So my goodness, what... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab these together in a second, but what an amazing box box number three ended up being. But yeah, that's box number three. Let me show you guys everything that I just picked out. Before I wrap up, let me just go over the maybes. So bear witness, unfortunately, I am not keeping because it is not in the original aspect ratio. And then we have uh, Delirium. So this one is in widescreen and looking at it, it actually looks like a slasher film. So I will put this one. I won't keep it in this case though. Um, I will just end up putting this one in a binder and then getting rid of the case. Um, and then Watchful Eye, another one. I cannot tell what the original aspect ratio is, um, but given what it is, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. It just looks like soft core like Cinemax stuff, which is fun, but I don't know with everything else I'm keeping, I think I can go ahead and get rid of this one again. If I'm wrong, let me know down below. So out of the maybes delirium, I'm going to put into a binder. So that's uh, the results of those. All right, so there's box number three. So uh, just a bunch of creature features, some Korean horror in here. Just an awesome box. Like what a, what a fun box that was to go through. So tons of stuff I'd never heard of, but that's always my favorite. But um, so I don't know right now what this number is. I didn't count it, but hopefully right now you are seeing exactly how many I'm keeping, how many are going into a binder. So I'm keeping those just not in its full form. And then how many I'm uh, donating slash selling. You should be seeing those numbers right now. So yeah, just a really good box. So thank you guys for joining me on this one. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you guys have seen or heard of any of these that you think I maybe should hold on to that I'm getting rid of or ones that I'm keeping that I really don't need. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I've appreciated your support over this series just the entire time. So thank you for all of that and uh, keep leaving those comments. As always, guys, if you did enjoy this video though, please give it a like down below. That really does help me out. And like I always say, I don't just talk movies. I talk all things media, be it books, movies, video games, manga, collectibles. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. And I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.